Hello, thanks for joining us at this West London Sport QPR podcast. I'm Dan Bennett here with my West London Sport colleague Ian McCullough and former QPR striker Kevin Gallen. Uh, I mean, we've not had a lot of uh, stuff to, I guess, criticise this season, given how well QPR have done, but it seems at the moment they've hit a bit of a blip. Uh, no wins in four if we're counting the cup game against Peterborough, back-to-back defeats in the league, following last night's 2-0 defeat at Millwall, uh, and obviously lost to Barnsley as well on the weekend. Uh, Kev, what are your... What have you kind of observed from this sort of little well, dip in form that Cooper I've had recently? And obviously when Mark Warburton was speaking last night after the game, he kind of stressed that calm is needed and there was no need to I don't know, over-exaggerate, essentially. I mean, do you kind of agree with that? Is this just a minor blip, a bad run of form, or do you think there's something bigger to worry about here? Well, I think it's just a blip, but it, it depends the, the blip. If the blip carries on, then it's like, oh, yeah, then uh, it's a bit of a problem. We've got a game on Saturday, home game against Hull. Now, we win that, blip's over, back on a, a winning run, and uh, we sort of forget, you'll you'll end up forgetting the Millwall and the Barnsley, and then you win and you look into the next few games, but you lose that game, and then 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 we can sort of really well hold on what's going on here. Uh, regarding what the manager says, yeah, I think, I think it needs to calm down. I mean, the, the team needs the fans right behind them on Saturday again. Um, like I said, it's all—it's always about the, it's always about the next game. When you lose, when you win, and you can't have the ups and downs. But, and I, I'm a fan as well, and I'm there. I was at the game last night, and you're frustrated. We're frustrated, but I play football, and all the managers used to say to us all the good ones anyway, used to say, when you win, you sort of just say so you're there on that level, like there's your level. You win, you go up, you're happy, you're happy. And when you lose, you go down a little bit. But you're always sort of in there, just always on to the next game. And the reactions of some fans and me myself at times is we win, oh, we're the best thing ever. We're going to we'll do this. We lose, oh, we're rubbish. It's needs to just calm down, look to the next game. Hull at home, winnable game for QPR. We get three points, we're back on track. Yeah, I mean, every kind of team hits their blip, don't they? But I mean, what, when you look at this, of the Barnsley game, and obviously you mentioned you were at game last night, what have you noticed that maybe has been a big contributing factor to this kind of dip in form? Like, what have you noticed? Well, to be honest, last night there was sort of, it was one of those games where I thought we sort of, we lost every sort of physical challenge. They, Millwall were first to the ball all over the pitch. And when there was a header to be won, Millwall won it. When there was a tackle to be won, Millwall won it. And that was sort of a little bit surprising. And it is a little bit of a blip in form, but all teams at some stage of the, of the season has a little bit. And maybe a few players who you sort of rely on who are seven, seven, eight out of 10 nearly every week. In the last couple of games, they might have dropped to a, a five or a six. So need to get back up to the sevens and eights and the consistency. Big game on Saturday, I keep saying it's on to the next game. But just just from just looking at the game last night, I wasn't at the Barnsley game, but I heard it wasn't great either. We didn't win the 50-50s. We didn't win our headers. Millwall were first to the ball. They look quicker. They look, I don't like saying it, they look more hungry and up for it than what QPR did last night. And I don't, you know... Hopefully we can that game's out the window and we look forward. What what can like what what is that down to? Do you think is it just sometimes it just happens? Like is it tiredness? Is it I don't know, just not taking it, it seriously it, enough? Like what what goes into that really? I don't know. I mean, sort of that game last night was it sort of ideal for maybe have a Namos in the midfield where you got more legs for closing down and maybe take either Chair or Willikoff, um and come on, uh, be a sub and sort of, you know, have a bit more legs in midfield. It's, it's, all, it's all easy to talk about ifs and buts. Could he have done this? Could the manager have picked this team? Could he have played this? Looking at it now, he might be thinking that game was maybe suited for Amos and I'll leave Chair out. Willis comes back in because... Um, when Chair was in the AFCON, QPR was, I'm blaming on Chair, but when QPR on the AFCON, when Chair was in the AFCON, QPR had a really good uh, string, of res, uh, string of results. Uh, it's, look, 
we could talk maybe should have played him, should have played him. It's it's a difficult one. It's like talking like after the Lord Mayor show, isn't it? We, we've all got different opinions. Ian, you went to Barnsley, you went to Millwall as well, covering it for West London Sport. What have you? What's jumped out to you is maybe this not been the same as it has been previously in the season. What what have you kind of noticed that's contributed to this bad run? A bit of the energy, really. I mean, they're not moving the ball. When QPR are good, they move the ball fast and quickly, and the wing backs, you know, make a real uh, presence on the on the flanks, um, allowing sort of um, Willock to get in and you know do his stuff. And last night, I thought, um, well, early in the season, you know, Rob Dickey, for example, was much more prominent in bringing the ball out of defence and starting attacks from the back. That hasn't seemed to have happened so much. Um, Stephen Johansson was playing very deep last night. He was almost playing in front of the, you know, the back three, just trying to get the ball and trying to play something. I don't think it's his game, trying to play through the middle. I think Johansson's a lot better when he's sort of spreading the ball wide, you know, moving the ball. That, that's what he does. He's a good player at that. But, you know, actually playing through the middle, I don't think it works for him. And um, Rangers got overrun yet again in midfield. Um, I feel very sorry for Luke Amos. I think he's been a bit hard done by to be, to be left out. Um, the game against Reading, he was very good, probably the man of the match. Um, got 45 minutes against Peterborough and sort of hasn't really featured much since. Um, again, Wallace got injured. Um, Wallace has been decent this year, but I don't think that could be the worst thing for QPR. He looked a bit laboured in the last few games. Um, McCullum has played two matches for the 23s this week. He could start Saturday or he's going to be at least in the squad. So that should bring a bit of energy. You know, Rob Dickey's been great since Rangers have signed him, but him being suspended for two games, I don't think that'll be the worst thing for him. I think he's played every game this season. He looks a little bit laboured. If he was to be rested, no matter how you dress it, he's going to see that. Am I being dropped? Does his confidence go? That kind of thing. So two games just away, get away from it, just re recharge, refresh and come back. For the Blackburn game, I think that would be good. That gives chance for Sanderson to come in. So he can, he can freshen it up a little bit. I just think I need to bring the energy. Um, I mean, there, some reaction on Twitter has been massively over the top. But at the same time, 7,500 QPR fans have been to, you know, overall been to Peterborough, Barnsley, Millwall last night. and haven't seen a shot, haven't seen a goal and haven't seen the team play very well. So you can understand the frustration. And, you know, as Ken said, people are very excited about what could be. But you have to take rough with a smooth sometimes. This is always going to happen. Every single team that's been promoted has had dips in form. It will happen. It happens to Leeds every year before they went up. Uh, Fulham have had it this season. Bournemouth have had it recently. Um, this team reminds me a lot of the Crystal Palace team that went up when um, Kev's boss, Kev, Dougie Friedman, was sort of in season in charge for half a season there before Ian Holloway took over, where they that's started the season. Cool. Yeah, they started like a steam train <laughs> palace and then really tapered off mid late season. I think they won win in 10 and then, you know, but stayed in around the playoffs. That's what you have to do. Just be in and around there. You know, if you don't go up automatically, just don't fall out the top six or just don't drift too far away from it. But that's what they have to do. They've got 16 games to go. They're still in a very good position. Um, you know, you move on to your next game and as Kev said, very winnable game Saturday. It won't be easy. Hull of a good record at QPR, but it's a game you look at and go, well, you're not playing Fulham at home, are you? So you've got a real chance to kind of get back on the horse, so to speak, and, you know, put, you know, this so-called crisis behind them. That's what I was going to say. I mean, you asked him after the game about, does he bring the changes in? And he gave quite a strong response, didn't he? He came out and said that people need to calm down and that backed the players essentially and said, these are, these are the guys that got us into this position in the first place. They are where they are. Everyone just said to me, oh, you're in a great position that other boys wasting it. Who got them there in the first place? They did. They got 17 points out of 21. And suddenly in two games, I'm not being told, well, are you going to make changes? Come on, in, in what world are we living? They're, they're, where are they in the league tonight? Fourth? They're fourth in the league and people start saying, hang on a second, change him, he's not good enough. They've got us to where we are now. Their efforts, their work ethic, their application has got us into fourth. They lost a couple of games. I'm looking at teams last night dropping points. That's the nature of the championship. And it's this panic and this is, what, 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 what do we do now? Just calm down and keep playing football. They're a good team. They haven't become a bad set of players overnight. But it's this mentality of 
you know, reactionary and what do we do now? Just calm, just calm. They're fourth, they're fourth of the game in hand. Come on, that's where they are. At the start of the season, would you have taken it? Do you know what I'm saying? But it's just, I know it's football, I know it's fans, it's opinion, and that's fantastic, that's why we love the game. But sometimes it's a level head, calm down, you look at the table, you're fourth with a game in hand. Like, what did you make of that response? Do you, do you kind of agree with what he said? Yeah, I thought he was, you know, he's always very measured at Warburton, um, always backs his players, which is, which is good. You know, you don't want, you know, there's been certain managers that have managed to keep it before that very volatile and will throw the toys out of the pram at the, you know, every available opportunity. He, he doesn't do that, but he was as, as defiant as I've seen him last night. Um, and, you know, he's got a point, you know, these players aren't bad players overnight. They're in a bad run of form, but, you know, I think he does have to kind of look at who he's going to play Saturday. Um, I mean, I've been quite vocal in that. I think that Dieng should be in the side, whether he goes back to him now, you know, Marshall, that's not a lot wrong, made a really good save last night, but, you know, he, he's been in goal for three out of four defeats. He, he's made a point after Warburton that Dieng is the number one goalkeeper. Well, if he's the number one goalkeeper, then, you know, now's the time to probably to, to bring him back. Yeah, and we've got that full press conference video on our YouTube channel as well, so if you haven't watch that yeah well well worth going to watch he said some uh, definitely said some interesting things I suppose one of the concerns Kev is you know QPR since Mark Warburton took over really have been a team that's prided themselves on how good they've been going forward you know that's been kind of the route of success and you know the first couple of seasons there were big defensive issues which kind of held the team back not so much this season although there's still been a few but recently it's sort of been the goal scoring has, has dried up as well I mean if we count the cup game three of the last four with no goals like what have you noticed that's changed in that respect? What you know, because you could say, oh, well, they missed chances and they have missed a few, but I, I would say from what I've seen, they've not been creating anywhere near as much as they have been earlier in the season. Would you kind of agree with that? Yeah, well, yeah. Last night, um, yeah, we didn't we didn't really create. A, I mean, I can't remember. Did we create a chance? I mean, a real like, a, you know, you have chances. Oh, we have a shot from twenty five yards. I don't really say that's a chance that's like you know usually they go wider over the bowl one in ten goes in the top corner but I'm talking about a clear-cut chance where you say he should have scored and I can't really remember last night that did we, did, we didn't have one we didn't really create one against Barnsley I think there was one right at the death I want there I've, I see the highlights where Dykes didn't get a connection if he connects with a header it probably goes in and then I was at the Middlesbrough game second half we scored, but that was Joe Lumley just passing it to Willock. So we didn't really, we haven't really been creating um, a lot. And it's, it's it's hard to put your finger on it. And I think Ian said it there, that they are looking a little bit jaded. They sort of need a re, maybe a little recharge. And regarding freshening up, up and ringing the changes, I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. And I would expect a few changes to be made. I mean, Dickie now has got a two-game a two game, uh, ban. 100%, I think he's played every game last season. Am I right? Or near pretty enough? Much, yeah. And pretty much every game this season. And you be, I've been in that situation when I played, like when I was playing and you play every week and sometimes, you know, a little break gets you re-motivated, refresh, uh, recharge the batteries. And it ain't a bad thing for Dickie now to have a couple of games off and you, well, you'll probably come back and see his performances uh, hopefully will go up again. I would expect the manager to um, make a few changes. I wouldn't be surprised if Seni Dien comes back in. Um, Amos, maybe. A bit more sort of running, a bit more mobility in the team. I think we did last night, looked a little bit slow, slow in possession, and no one really ran past Millwall's defence. No one actually, I think Dykes did one in the first half and there was a shouts for a penalty, but got a corner. But no one actually broke their their back line and ran in behind them with or without the ball. And I think um, you know, QPR really need to when they're playing well is when they're running in behind from wide areas and cutting balls back and for people to score. So I would not be surprised uh he will make a few changes and, and I think just a little bit more energy in the team. What have you made of Dykes? Because I mean we spoke didn't we after the Reading game when you scored a couple of goals and you kind of said that you wanted that to be a catalyst for him going forward now he can get back to last season's form and obviously he's come since he has got healthy again he's gone straight back into the team you know Warburton's he's essentially the first choice striker isn't he but 
just kind of not seemed to have gone well for him. I mean, I watched him at Middlesbrough and I actually thought he did quite well. I thought he was quite good in the air, like got a really nice flick on for chair. I thought he's a real presence, but from what I gather, he hasn't really seemed to be able to replicate that. And he's obviously not really had, you know, he's not scored but since then, but he's he's not really had the, the service as well, I guess, which isn't really his fault. But what have you kind of made for him? Is there is it something that he needs more help up there, do you think? Is that something they could change? Maybe, maybe needs a bit more help. I have to say the service wasn't great to him, but... What disappointed me last night with Dykes is he was up against three big centre halves, and he's a big lad, and he's athletic, and he can win a header. And he sort of, sort of went a little bit missing. Where there was a couple of times where I saw Dicky come out with the ball, and he should be across showing to feet to link up the play, and he was on the opposite side of the pitch. And I was just like thinking, you got to get across the pitch and help the team here, and help the ball. The ball's got to come in. I said it last week. There's at times, and last night was a perfect example of when a centre forward has to back into the centre half, get hold of it and link the play up and get us some attacking play going in. And last night, Dykes, for me, he, he had a really poor game and I was very disappointed because I did say, I, I thought after the Reading, when he scored them two really good headers, I thought, you know, this could be a catalyst, like you just said, a catalyst for what he did last season where he went games and Fifth, whatever, 15 games without a goal and then he scored one and he, was, yeah. and he went he was on fire for the end of the, for the rest of the season and I thought you know this one them two goals against Reading this could be Dykes to the end of the season and do you know what he, and he hasn't really he hasn't really done it and Charlie came on last night and he actually just got the ball held it up and laid it and, and got in the box and you, you, you need against teams when you're having a performance like that last night against Millwall, you need your centre forward just to, you probably won't score in that game, but you need to just lead the line, hold the ball up, win headers, put yourself about, be a handful for the centre halves. And last night, Dykes wasn't. Let's hope he can, he can re, um, get back to the form this Saturday against Hull that he, uh, that he had against Reading. Yeah, I mean, we did a lot in the transfer window about what we thought the club needed to do. We know. Mark Warburton was in, or the club were in for another sort of number 10 creative player. I mean, you spoke and said, sort of said that they, you think they need another striker. I mean, I've, I've sort of said as well, I think they do, they could use definitely another sort of creative striker just off the striker, that sort of player. I mean, obviously they were in for Tom Lawrence and, and Jamie Patterson at, at Swansea as well, who can kind of do that, even though they're not out and out strikers. Do you feel like they're lacking that sort of another option up there, whether it's a pacey striker who gets in behind, whether it's another player that, can create off the striker. Do you feel like that was something that they really needed to do in January and that sort of showing now? Or well, I did. I mean, every time we done this um, this podcast, um, I said I always thought that we needed another striker. Um, I do believe. I think that, I think QPR missed a trick there. I don't. I don't know what the finances of the club. Or I think I was ch chatting to Ian there before we, we came on air. He said maybe you know with the FFP we couldn't uh, maybe not afford to to do it. But I really did think it was an opportunity to get another striker in a Naki Wells type, um, a Dwight Gale type, sort of someone like sharp around the box who makes little diagonal runs. And that's a player we sort of haven't really got. We've got a big centre forward in um, Lyndon Dykes. We've got a poacher sort of from crosses in Charlie Austin. Andre Gray is more of an away where for a counter attack, but we haven't got one who can sort of, when they have a team of deep, Make little dart in diagonal runs, and and you, you can slip like where chair and uh, Willock can slip little balls in, just like five yard, ten yard balls in and around the box. And Naki Wells or Dwight Gale would have been ideal. Obviously, it didn't happen, but I was I, I was very surprised that we didn't get another striker in in January. Mm. I don't, yeah, I don't think there's massive reason to panic now. I think the whole game on Saturday is is big. I think if they can win that one that would alleviate a lot of pressure on the team. I think, every, like you said, Ian, every team goes for this run, don't they? Playoff teams are in the playoffs. You know, they're not good enough for automatic is because they have a bit of inconsistency in their season. And I still think QPR have got everything about them to get in the playoffs come the end of the season. You well, know, just, I, Kev, what do you think about, you talk about pacey striker. I mean, obviously they're not going to get one now, but do you think, is it an option playing Willock? Is it kind of an out and out forward? He's played that position, hasn't he? He played uh, like up with someone. I don't know if about playing him up there on his own. No, not on his own, but I mean sort of alongside Dykes yeah. or Austin. It just because I think the thing with Dykes is, I mean I've never done it, but I, I mean you obviously have. But 
the, one of the hardest things in football must be playing up front on your own and you're being marked. You've got three centre backs, you've been marked by a big boat. But it's not, you're not going to win everything in the air, but you've got to win a free, couple of free kicks, lean into him. But just stop. And he well, wasn't do, even doing that. What, and I think, do you know what? The ball comes up, you back in, you get a free kick. It just takes a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Everything calms down, especially when you're under a bit of pressure and just calms it down and you move up the pitch. And yeah, he didn't do that last night. And I thought it was disappointing. Was and I, I spoke to a few fans and, you know, at half time and they weren't going, but like, um, they were sort of giving it, he's got to do more, he's got to do more. What do you think, Kevin? I'm like, do you know what? I can't say, I've got to agree with you. He's got to do more. And uh, yeah, I mean, I like say, you said about maybe putting Willock up there and, and that we sort of just said we're not going to panic. So, you know, <laughs> got it. no, it's, like, I, it's an option. But the thing is, and I think you said it just 10 minutes ago, every team in the, in the, in the league goes through a blip. Fulham, everyone. This is QPRs. Now, the thing with this little blip, we need to get it out of the way and win on Saturday. I think this is where he really needs is... Um, I mean, obviously, you've got the outside noise and that. You, they'll kind of, I guess, what's the bunker down and, you know, siege mentality, et cetera, et cetera. But, I mean, I think he really needs to get his kind of senior players on side now and really sort of just turn to them, your Austin's, your Hansons. Um Adoma, the, these types of players, and you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we started Austin on on Saturday just for because I agree with what Kevin was saying. When when Austin came on, you know, he didn't really get much of a chance to to um, sort of turn the game as a side, but he did look more potent and more threatening than than Dykes did. It's only because he showed for defeat, laid it off, and then yeah, you know, I mean, at once it was basic stuff. Towards the end, you know, Dykes is taking long throws. I mean, do you really want your six foot two centre forward, you know, hurling the hurling the ball in the box? But he wasn't winning anything in the air, so you might as well yeah. use him for something because it was, you know, he has those days. All strikers have those days. I mean, he was very good against Reading, you know, a couple of home games back, and you got to give him the benefit. It was a bad day, but you know, he's got to do more. But yeah, what do you do? What do you do? To be fair, he's got to do more, but the whole team last night had yeah. to do more. So can't just pin it on one person. But and I'm not. But there was. If, I mean, who was our best player last night? I don't know. Probably the goalkeeper. <laughs> Did anyone really get above a six on out, yeah. out outfield? Not really. So it's just one of the. Hopefully, it's just like we keep saying. Hopefully, it's just a blip, and we can get on, move on on Saturday, and get winning again. Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, come back. If you come back onto the channel later in the week, we'll have our predictions video uh, as well for the whole game. Um, so, yeah, leave a comment uh, what your kind of thoughts are on, on what we've spoken about today. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and leave a like on the video. And uh, we'll be back later in the week with a predictions video.